have you created Spring Boot applications with Angular? And how do you manage the HTML files and the JavaScript files in a Spring Boot application? Isn't it difficult to configure the setup initially? Because you will have to have lots of HTML files and JavaScript files generated beforehand and you will have to integrate that into your Spring Boot project under a different folder so that it can align into a single code base. Isn't that quite difficult? JHipster is going to solve that particular problem by automatically creating these projects out of the box. In this video, we are going to see how to create or how to use JHipster to create a Spring Boot application with Angular. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primus. JHipster is a framework or a generator which creates code for us to easily create applications with Spring Boot and Angular. This is the website of JHipster, jhipster.tech. It is nothing but a utility with which you can create, deploy, and develop Spring Boot and Angular based applications out of the box. You don't have to create projects from the start.spring.io and then add your HTML and JavaScript files. You don't have to handcraft all those stuff manually. You can use jhipster to create all these stuff automatically. So what jhipster does is it uses Spring Boot and creates the Spring Boot based project. It uses Grunt, Gulp and other different configurations to set up a NPM based UI module with which Angular can be run. It creates an end-to-end -end setup with Spring Boot and Angular so that you have a UI framework with which you can manage your application. You can customize that based on your need, but what jhipster does is it is going to create that with just a single step process. We are going to create a series of step. We are going to use a series of step which jhipster provides to set our expectation and the project gets created based on our inputs. So let's see how to do that. Before starting off with the jhipster project, you need to set up some stuff for jhipster to be run. You can use the jhipster command line interface to set up the project. In order to do that, you can go to the setting up environment where we have an option called installing jhipster. This shows up the different steps which we need to perform during the setup process. It can be either for the Mac OS or it can be for Windows as well. So you have different options mentioned here. If you follow these options, you will be able to set it up. So I have a Mac OS here. So what I did is I just installed hips, jhipster, brew install jhipster. Also, I did not have gulp. So I had to install gulp using yarn. So previously I had created yarn and npm packages. So I had already node, yarn, bower, etc. I did not have gulp and jhipster. So I used j, uh, brew because I have brew inbuilt in my laptop. So I am using brew to install jhipster and I have done that so it provides a command line interface as well if you are using windows you can use the chocolate to install jhipster so I am going to use the angular js project so which basically is the javascript version of angular 1.x I have not learnt angular typescript yet so I am going to show only the ang angular javascript part of jhipster so let's try setting it up right I have the uh, terminal here, so this is just my terminal, nothing else. I am in the folder called uh, jhipster where I am going to create a project. There is nothing right now in this particular directly. I am going to create the project called hello world. Let's go into the module. So in order to create the Spring Boot and the Angular application using jhipster, you can run the command jhipster. So jhipster is going to set up my default stuff. So jhipster is a command line interface. So I have done that already. I have installed jhipster already. That's why I'm able to enter jhipster separately. If you want to create an application, you can say jhipster colon app. Even if you don't provide that, by default, it will execute the jhipster colon app command. And you can see this interactive shell, which is going to pop up. And there are lots of options here, which, we, which are like by default mentioned here. You can take a look at that. This is going to say application files will be generated in the folder this particular folder yeah i want to generate it here that's fine 
uh, which type of application would you like to create i would like to have a monolithic application because i don't want to have multiple microservices if you want to create microservices uh, basically different jvms or different services then you can select the microservices option i'm going to select the monolithic application because i want the ui and the spring boot application to be in the same server so i have selected that what is the base name of the application i'm just going to say hello world this is just for the naming purpose in the palm xml the next one is the java package so i'm going to say com tech primers j hipster that's going to be our java package name so do you want to use jhipster registry to configure monitor and scale your application so i don't want to do that right now so i'm just going to say no what are the different authentications right which type of authentic authentication would you like to use i'm going to select just the http session authentication there are different types of authentication you can use jwt or oauth2 so by default the ui is going to set it up so many of you were asking me to um, help you in the oauth or jwt space but if you are using jhipster you don't have to do that because jhipster by default integrates with oauth which is the spring implementation of oauth so i'm just going to select http session authentication here the next step is which type of database would you like to use i'm going to use h2 in in our case so this is for the development purpose next it asks for the production purpose because in production it suggests that we should not be using h2 so by default it is telling me mysql mariadb postgre sql oracle or my microsoft sql server i'm just going to select mysql because i'm not going to deploy anything to my production or anything remotely so i'll just select mysql for development it is asking me what type of database i would like to use i'm just going to say h2 with in memory persistence so i don't want to store anything in the file system I ju i'm just going to say i want an in memory persistence whenever i'm having the data the next step is do you want to use spring cache abstraction i'm just going to say yes use the eh cache implementation the next is uh, do you want hyperlet second level cache i'm just going to say no i don't want any hyperlet second level cache would you like to use maven or gradle you can choose either i am going to use maven the next step is to integrate the other technologies which are required into our applications for example social login do you want to integrate google facebook twitter login or search engine elastic stuff so i'm just going to or in fact you can integrate the web sockets as well but uh, previously we saw sometime back what are web sockets if you want to directly use web sockets you can use jhipster to directly integrate web sockets as well we can see that later but i'm just going to use the swagger for code generation so i'm just going to select api first development using swagger code gen so swagger will be integrated into our application out of the box and the apis are going to be created the api designs are going to be created the next is the major part which framework would you like to use as a client so i'm just going to select angular js 1.x because i don't want to use typescript here would you like to enable sas support i'm just going to say no enable internationalization support if you select this as yes it is just going to ask you a different language but i don't want a different language i'm just going to say no if you are from a different country and if you want to use your own language you can do that besides junit and comma which testing framework would you like to use i am just going to say protractor would you like to install any other generator from the jhipster marketplace i'm just going to say no i don't want anything else so this is going to download and validate all the setups which we did now if we had mentioned a different step it is going to take a different route so i'll just fast forward this for the next 5 seconds so that you can see the completion of this particular step so the installation is completed i need to run either gulp install or uh, maven nw i'm just going to do a gulp install meanwhile uh, i'll just open the project using my intellij i'll just say idea open let my project open in intellij again and uh, meanwhile i'll also do a gulp install so that it downloads or 
install the UI related stuff as a part of the setup because gulp install is going to do the maven install basically it is going to download the dependencies which are required for that particular UI related project so let's do the gulp install this will take a while meanwhile IntelliJ is coming up and we should be having our project importing the stuff uh, I'll just fast forward that as well so that you can take a look in the next five seconds okay the project is almost up the dependencies are getting downloaded and the indexes are going to happen after that meanwhile what we can do is we can open the pom xml and we can take a look at the different dependencies which are mentioned inside the pom xml let's remove this so the different dependencies are maven version is 3 java version is 1.8 scala there is a scala version as well in this project uh, there is a node node version yarn yarn version so node and um, node is a javascript server which we can use for hosting our ui there so for example the angular js part can be hosted there yarn is a dependency downloader like maven like just does the only the dependency part it doesn't do the complete stuff like maven uh, next we have bunch of project related dependencies then we have maven related dependencies there are jhipster dependencies for example this is the jhipster version 0.1.7 then we have the spring boot version 1.5.9 then we have hibernate java assist for annotation processing then we have liquibase liquibase is for database schema creation which can be done automatically then we have the validation api in hibernate then we have map struct as well to map the java beans to the java class then um, we have some maven dependencies here then we have the docker file so the docker file gets created out of the box in this particular project we are going to see that next it also has the uh, plugins and also the java code coverage jacoco plugin it also has a front end maven plugin so these are different plugin related versions it also has the sonar exclusions which are configured explicitly here these are different sonar exclusions which are done apart from that nothing else and then we have the dependencies mentioned here so all the versions which we have seen all those dependencies would be mentioned here so they are using J hipster drop wizard for metrics then jackson hashu database json path we have swagger we have liquibase we have hikari connection pool and all other stuff right so all these are mentioned here let's go to the exact structure of the project so the indexing is completed here and if you notice it has already converted this project into a git project as well so jhipster in fact converts the new project into a git project by default so we have bunch of folders here we have gulp folder we have maven folder we have the node modules as well so under the main you can notice that there is a docker folder docker folder has the docker files which are required when we are going to deploy this particular package as a docker image so these are different configurations which we are supposed to add to the docker file in order to create a docker image so these are by default provided by the hipster project same with the mysql yaml and the sonar for the package scans the app.yaml is specific to our application yaml so these are different configuration files which are provided by jhipster for the docker project or docker deployments then we have the java so java has all our java code so if you see here these are the different packages which are created by default and there are a bunch of code here already because we are going to see why in a while we have lots of files here the repositories the config has the config java configurations or the spring boot configurations you can see the add configuration annotation so these are different configurations which are required for the setup which we already did and there are lots of jpa repositories which are by default created here we do have some service classes in the under the service package and the resources are under the web rest package so i can see account resource which is a rest controller so it is using spring mvc by default because we are using a spring boot project 
So that's with the Java code. We do have the configurations under the resources folder. So the liquid base configurations are present here. For example, the table schemas can be mentioned under the liquid base folder. We do have the application specific configurations in the application YAML. For dev, we have some separate configuration, and for prod, we have some separate configuration. So all these are by default created by jhipster. So same with other package related stuff. So for example, these are for sending out mails. There are other HTML formats as well, which can be used. Okay, we do have H2 server properties. That's it. So now under the web app folder, we will have all the JavaScript and the HTML files which are required for the Angular project. So consider this as a separate Angular project. That's how it is going to look like. So we do have the Gulf file outside. The Gulf file and the Bova JSON. These are some different setups which we can use for the dev. These are outside the web apps. So under the web apps, we have the app folder. We also have the Swagger UI. If you notice here, there is a Swagger UI directly. So you can configure or even modify this particular code in order to make your Swagger UI custom driven. So under the app, we have the application specific Angular code. So this is Angular JS. So you can see the JavaScript code here. If I go to home, you can see the index.html, which is going to say welcome Java hipster. So this is where our HTML codes reside. And if you want to do any Angular specific changes, for example, JavaScript specific changes, then you can do it in the controller or you can even create services and you can bind them. So now let's start the application. So that's it, right? So we don't have anything else apart from that. We can directly start the project. So I'm going to go to the plugin, the Spring Boot plugin, and then I'm going to run the Spring Boot run. So this is going to bring our application. However, I have uh, 8080 blocked by my default uh, Jenkins. So I'm going to change that particular port. Since the profile is dev, I can see the profile here as dev. So I'm just going to do application dev. Let me search for server. Yeah. So I'm just going to use the port 8082 for now. Let me start the application now because I don't want to use the 8080 port because it is going to fail because already Jenkins is running in my laptop with that port. The other thing is I think it is using Java 9. Let me downgrade that as well because by default I have Java 9 in my laptop. Let me change that as well. So yep, that should do. Hopefully there are no more changes. Let me check. I think that's it. Let me run the project. So this is going to take few minutes for us to power up. Meanwhile, we can go to the Gulp install, yep, Gulp install is completed. So we should be good with the UI part. So once this uh, Spring Boot application comes up, the UI should be ready as well. So we don't have to do anything extra. If you don't run the Gulp install, you will be getting errors because the UI will not be ready until you do a Gulp install. Gulp install is similar to the Maven install because it is going to download the dependencies for the UI project. So the jhipster is almost up. I can see the banner here. And it is registering the different components which we have asked it to do. So we are up here. The application hello world is running. Access URLs are these. So I'm just going to open this URL. Let me copy this. And I'm hitting the URL here. Yep, my application is up and you can see this is the ui this is created using angular and we do have the backend stuff which are running in the spring boot framework so this is what jhipster has done it has created a ui and it has provided us some backend stuff out of the box we didn't do any setup here we just created using the jhipster command line interface we just created the project and we just started the spring boot application and we can see the ui and the backend already Let's try running a uh, logging in. So by default, the login is admin admin or user user. I'll try login using admin admin. And I can see more options here. I can see administration options and I can see metrics. If I go to metrics, it shows how many threads are running in this particular JVM. 
wherever we are using so yeah, i can see the service name see this right the package names whatever we have i can see who's using you can see the number of requests coming in and how many requests were failing as well currently the memory is at 39 percentage non heap usage threads waiting we do also have the health checks for the disk and the database which we have configured we do have configuration details you can see the configurations from the administration ui you can notice this see this right you can see all the configurations which we have embedded in the application yaml which can be seen from this particular ui as well we do have the logs as well so it is just loading this is going to load all the logs which were there present in this particular application it also has the swagger ui so if you go to api this is the api design so which is going to have swagger and you can see swagger apis by default so if you add new resources those are going to get auto scanned by swagger and they will be generated here along with the other resources and i can see this right i can just try running one resource just to show if it works i'll just try this so this is going to show what are the different account di different accounts which are there in the server and i can see only one account which is the administrator or the current one right and it has authority authorities like role user role admin etc so this is jhipster so let's try changing something right i showed you the html the home html where is the home html yeah the home html is where we had the uh, welcome jhipster let's try changing this to welcome tech primers we need to refresh this manually because i don't have the real time live reload setup so wherever whenever you modify a html page it can immediately refresh the browser there is an option in gulp or grunt you can set it up but i have not set that yet right i just created the project out of the box so i just changed the html and let's try refreshing this should get reflected see this welcome tech primers the change has got reflected from here you can even modify stuff you can add stuff you can customize this particular ui so we can customize the html page based on our requirements and we can make it look completely different as well so it is completely up to us what jhipster does is it acts as a generator and it creates the skeleton and the initial setup which we require which most of us require that's what it has done and then we can customize that for our need so that is what jhipster does and jhipster has been the talk of the town in the last few years because it has easy connectivity between the spring boot and the angular ui so that's all about jhipster i hope you got a basic understanding about what is jhipster and how we can use jhipster to create a simple spring boot application with the angular ui if you are using angular 5 or angular 2 plus you can directly go to angular 5 like how i showed here i i didn't use the angular 5 but i i i need to learn angular 5 in order to show you guys but I know angular one that's why i showed you with angular one i hope you like this particular video if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much